Doctor Devotion is brought to you by Logos Bible Software. Logos is offering a nice discount to listeners of Doctor and Devotion. Find out in the show notes or later on in the episode. Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast that explores Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective and from a local cigar shop. My name is Joe Thorne. I'm the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jimmy Fowler, executive pastor at Redeemer Fellowship. Sunday, Sunday, man. Here we go. Ooh. Yeah, here we're Sunday. We're enjoying and We're in the uh, La Vida. Yeah, and then we're watching the lounge. game. Watching I'm watching the it game. through the back of my head. It's more well, enjoyable yeah, for well, me yeah, that way. Yeah, because you don't know what's going on I right don't, now. Well, I know as yeah. much with my head this way as I would if I was facing yeah. the screen. So, I know so just that as is much. Called, that, that is the Green Bay Packers. The they're Green Bay against. Packers. They're from the, Ohio. <laughs> I don't know. No, I know they're from Wisconsin. I know that. You big cheese head. I know the cheese heads. See, I know. The cheese, there you go. Good yeah, job. I know what's going good job, on. man. They're the so worst thing ever. I hate them. Yeah, we're back. What? We're back. We mm. were at uh, New Zealand. Oh, that's Wellington, right. We're New yeah, Zealand. That's right. And uh, finally got back. No no issues. No issues on the way back. No, Jimmy slept for like how long? 10 Just, hours. Jimmy slept 10 straight hours. Well, I mean, we were both exhausted, but yeah. even I slept a lot on the plane. I slept 10 hours once we got home. You slept 10 hours on that plane in that pod. In that pod. I was out. He was on his side, snuggled up with a oh, blanket, man. a pillow, Snoring. slippers. I didn't even they gave care. us slippers. They gave us slippers. I had yeah. slippers. <laughs> it was. I used the socks that they give you as well. <laughs> you did. You did. I put them all on. Yeah, I was socks, like, slippers, the whole thing. Uh, give you a look, a little toiletries kit. I brought it home, and Eli's like, I want that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my kids were fighting over it <laughs> Yeah, when I got home, too. So, no, it was good. Glad to be back. It's, uh, yeah, we're finally able to worship. With our family, with good today. people, yeah, not good those people, New Zealanders. No, all come on, stop it. It what? was yeah, we were finally able to be with you know. It, we miss home. Like yeah. you, you miss your family. We, 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 you we miss told, your friends. You yeah. miss your church. In fact, when you're with, and this is what I've been telling people, when you're with people as awesome as the people we were with yeah. in New Zealand, right? Uh, you up in Taronga on a Sunday, me yep. down with um, with the guys in, in Grace Net and Wellington. It's like. Uh, I love them so much. They're such good people. It reminds me of home. It makes me want to be around yeah, absolutely. our people. So yeah. Yeah, it makes me homesick. If I have to be anywhere with other Christians, uh, that's probably my favorite spot. But uh, we know lots of great people all over the world. But there's something about the New Zealanders and, and those churches in particular yeah. where it really feels like They're home. They're exotic. I think so you fit right in. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah it's it's very like, exotic. Oh, it's home. Yeah. Now, why did they start calling you Tattoo. I noticed when we were there, when Stop. people would look at you, they would call Stop. you Tattoo because you look like him. Stop. Like, no if Tattoo grew long hair and a beard, at all. you know what they did say? What they, they said, say. like, how is Jimmy allowed to make fun of your height? Look at how short he is. That's <laughs> they what did, they all okay. said. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. People did say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we're back so, into the rhythm of things. And mm. I'll be, I'm going to be honest right now. Oh, we're going to talk about it? I don't have hey. to talk about too much of it, but it's been like bef uh, the, going there. Before mm. we left, there was some stuff going on that made it a hard week. Yep. And we got back. And more stuff going on. More stuff. Yeah, we got back on a Tuesday. And uh, by Wednesday. By Wednesday. Uh, yeah, it was. Ain't sleeping. Nope. It's just been nope, can't stress. sleep. And so. Actually, I can sleep better now. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, you stopped I, caring. Yeah, that's, I know no, how you no, are. No. Yeah, I feel like peace. <laughs> yeah, I know. So. Just like, like probably a lot of our listeners, right? There are, there are those weeks or those seasons when. Things are going well. It's not that, that necessarily things are bad, but then these interruptions or these issues come into your life that bring about a great deal of stress. And what we're learning is, and I know what I'm learning very personally, is um, to find refuge in the love of God, the, yeah. the grace of God, the, the kindness of God, and the protection that offers me not necessarily safety from an accusation or, um, or a spiritual attack or whatever, but it would it offers me... Uh, safety from the loss of faith or the uh, or the jeopardy of my faith. So it's been really good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Donnie. Well, no, I was asking you to turn it off. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was, I was like, th th thumbs up. You're such a good man. So we could... Have it off. Oh, thank you, Donnie. <laughs> so, right, we're, so the, we're, we're trying to. Steve hopped up from the table and commandeered the exhaust fan. Or as the a very good fan friend, thank you, Steve. To stop the because noise. I had asked him. And then, <laughs> He's so kind. And then Donnie was like, I'm going to turn that back on, who's been a member here longer than any of us put together, probably. And uh, he just really graciously allowed us to do it. So thank, thank you, Donnie. Thank you, Donnie. Thank you, sir. You look mm -hmm. at that guy. Ain't nobody's regal. <laughs> Well, now no. you've been referred to it. Yeah, that's right, because you deserve it. Actually, so, regal is Latin for idiot. Jimmy learned a new word, true, and so that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> regali. All right. So, 
So we're here, Joe. We're at the cigar shop, right. and we said that you know we're going to post up the mics and uh, enjoy a cigar and talk through the 1689 chapter eight paragraph two. But we're not going to do the whole paragraph. No, it's just too much, man. No. We, we don't ever cover everything, but there's just so much in there. We thought, well, let's just cover the first part. Yeah. Um, I'll go ahead and read it. Uh, 1689 chapter eight paragraph two says. The Son of God, the second person in the Trinity, being very and eternal God, the brightness of the Father's glory, of one substance and equal with him who made the world, who upholds the world and governs all things he has made, did, when the fullness of time was complete, take upon him man's nature with all the essential properties and common infirmities of it, yet without sin. And we're going to stop there. There's a whole second paragraph, maybe a little bit longer uh, to that. Or second part of the paragraph, and so today we, we want to just kind of touch on on these 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 aspects of the person of Christ, um, you know, his eternality, yeah, um, his sovereignty, but also we want to talk about his human nature because uh, you know these two concepts, right, his his transcendence and his imminence, his his exaltation and his humanity, his closeness to us, uh, these are ideas that really. Um, can confuse. Yeah. Uh, they've they've led to people embracing weird heretical views because yeah. they're trying to trying to reconcile things in a, in a way that makes sense in their minds. That yeah, I mean, maybe, we've got we've had councils to you know yeah. really kind of hit on these uh, uh, on these topics, right? Right. So um, let's just start there at the beginning when it says the Son of God, the second person in the Holy Trinity, being very and eternal God. So. You know, we've already covered the, the Trinity here in the 1689, yeah. and so we're going back to that. This is a Trinitarian document, so it stands in the tradition of the Catholic creeds. Correct. And, and we're talking about Catholic... Little uh, C. Little C Catholic, yeah. right? Yeah. No That's, bells and smells for us. No, no, no. no, no. no well, no. the smell of well, smell of cigars. Yeah. That, so, yeah, I guess we've got some incense going. Yeah, we got some incense going. Yeah. and Bells. And... Bells uh, ale. Ale. Yeah, bells yeah. is a beer. Yeah, we got that. That's, that's, that's a nice stretch. Bells and I, smells, okay. Good job, good job. Jingle bells. We like jingle bells. Yeah, and okay. Batman does smell. But I think Robin, did Robin lay an egg? Uh, uh, I think the Batmobile lost a wheel. No, no, no. The Joker got away. No. <laughs> <laughs> Dummy. I know, we are dumb. <laughs> All right, so here it's, it, it's, again, making the point, right, that Jesus, the Son of God, or it's the yeah. Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, is very and eternal God. Right, he has always existed. Jesus did not come into existence. Mm -hmm. Remember the, the the study on theology, the state of theology that you did some re some reading on, and you shared. Correct. Yeah, like, I think it was like fifty something. I'm, I'm I, off the top of my head. I'm thinking it was yeah. like fifty eight percent, but I might be wrong on that number. But either way, it was over fifty percent of uh, people that profess to be evangelical. To be evangelical. So, uh, when they they answered the question that Jesus was the f first or, or the or best, the, or the best created being. Of God, they're like, uh, yeah, I totally agree. Check that box. Yeah, yeah, he's the best. <laughs> yeah, either totally agree or agree. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And so, uh, you know, each of the persons of the Trinity are co-eternal. No beginning, no end. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not modalists. Uh, we don't think that God has just changed the the way in which He exists or and the, the way manner, He's interacted with people, right? yep. the way which relates. So, He's very God. He is eternal God, and it also says that He is the brightness of the Father's glory. You know, when we're, when we're talking about that, what we're saying is that he is this representation, right? Yeah. He's this manifestation of yeah. God. He is the, the, um, it, talk it about is, like the radiance of the glory of God, right? In Colossians. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So we've, you know, we've, we've got these, these aspects of, of, of Christ's person when we see them, that when we see him, we're seeing God. Jesus says that, right? If you've seen me, you've seen the father. Correct. Right? So there we have it there. And in a number of other passages where Jesus is claiming divine status, he's claiming to be one with the father. You know, he is, um, like, uh, Hebrew says that he is the radiance of the glory of God. Mm. So I thought it was in Colossians. My bad. So yeah, but, <laughs> but it's it, but it, but, it, but Colossians has other things as well, right? Mm -hmm. Where um, it, it speaks to that. The, the main the main thing is. That if you've seen Jesus, then you have seen God. And this is what people have been yearning for their whole lives, right? The, for the history of redemption, we want to see God. This is what Moses wanted. Yeah. Let me just see your glory. Mm. Let me see it. And God's like, you can't handle my glory, son. Yeah. <laughs> you will be consumed. Mm. So I'm just going to show you a, a glimpse of my backside, and that's all you're going to see. Yeah. And yet God condescended as— Took on flesh. And, and, and he dwelled among us. So yeah. 
now in the, in the confession though it but it doesn't it, it it's almost like it can't get to the incarnation without saying more about jesus which is what i like mm. because i think if if you focus on jesus in his incarnated state during his ministry on earth you could draw a lot of wrong conclusions about who he is if that's really all that you're looking at so they'd say he is eternal god right the brightness of the father's glory and he uh, upholds and governs all things mm -hmm. that he has made yeah upholds and governs yeah creator and sustainer of all things oh uh, i love that i mean so this means that he is the sovereign one mm. we talk about the god of providence right uh, of a of a particular providence right we talk about uh, a god being a god of of sovereignty over all of the details of our lives yeah and you know in that hebrews passage right where he is the radiance of the glory of god it goes on to say that he is uh the you know the exact imprint of his nature and he upholds all things by the word of his power so Jesus, in the way that was, it was said to me a long time ago, is the reason everything is and, and is sustained is because Jesus says so. Mm. It's his word that, like, why does, it, why does the universe hold together? Why are we all here? Like, what is it that, yeah. that controls it all? It isn't God in abstract. It is Jesus. That should that should really like, uh, and I think I like your talk before, Joe, about how they, you know, it wants to get to the, we want to talk about the incarnation. But first, we got to talk about Jesus. We got to talk about Jesus' eternality, right? right. And uh, and I think this should give us because I think you're kind of talking about it a bit. There is when we look at uh, Jesus in in the Gospels, right. we kind of focus on his humanity. Right. We focus so much on on uh, the limitations that he had and 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 such. Uh, but there's still this this divine power this this creator sustainer of all things this this responsibility that he has uh and we kind of miss that because we're we're so focused on the humanity of christ right. but we miss out on the divinity which is why i think this the creed here you know the confession here is, is really kind of wanting to make sure they focus on that you gotta get both you gotta get both of these things and I, I've, I've known christians i've known highly educated um christians who are professionals who who get this wrong i mean and they'll just go against you know what I, what i think this teaching of scripture is but also then was plainly ex, uh, plainly explained in the creeds and confessions yeah i've heard them say things like well you know when jesus you know was walking the earth um he wasn't omnipresent he wasn't everywhere at once. He was only located on the earth. Um, and so the, 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 we get into trouble when we start, you know, cutting off his attributes and saying, mm. well, he didn't have these attributes anymore. We could say that they're veiled, that they're hidden. Yeah. But he cannot cease being God at any time. And God, by definition, is omniscient. And so I like that, you know, we're establishing who he is. He is truly God. He is sovereign God. Uh, like um, in, in Colossians, you were talking earlier, right? Where it says he's, he says he's the image of the invisible God, yep. right? The firstborn of all creation. That might be where some people get confused on the idea of being firstborn and yep. born. What does that mean? Yep. Um, for by him, all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. If that's, if this is not a statement of, of deity. I don't know what is. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. So wow. back to that idea that yep. he sustains it, he binds everything, he holds it all. I mean, this is the Jesus that we're talking about. So before we get in, we're just getting ready to get into them. Before we get into his humanity and, and what that looked like, you have to establish who he really was. Yeah. And you know one way of, uh, of establishing that, Joe? What's, what's one really good way? Okay. Of, Let me think of, about this. You know, when you're studying and right. you're trying to look at these things. like ah, if, I want to, if I want to understand the deity of Jesus... And the humanity of Jesus. Yeah. And like the, 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 okay, so he's got human nature, divine nature, but I want to understand all that. Hmm. Uh, okay. I, I would, I would, I don't think I'd be able to do a good job if I didn't, if I didn't use Logos Bible software, especially. Oh, version Logos 8. 8. Oh, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. You know what? Log Travel's got it. He just brought it up on his oh, phone. He's got good, job. On this phone. Mm -hmm. good job there, Travel. Oh, I guess we can take you out of the running for the giveaway. Yeah. <laughs> He got all, actually by now we would have gave it yeah, away. We, what, yeah. we, we, it's picked, but we, we got to pick. Yeah, we gave it away. But no. So here's the thing: every Christian feels like they should be studying the Bible, and these are some weighty things that we're talking about here. And so sometimes uh, when it's just me and my Bible, I know people don't like talking about this so much, but when it's just the individual with their Bible, I know I can make mistakes. Yeah. And if I'm not in community and I don't have others, other brothers and sisters around me to correct me as I'm thinking, I can really go wayward fast. Yeah. Uh, 
but it's the same thing when you're studying as well is not only do you want the community, you want the resources. Yeah. And so you want to be able to look and good resources. A good resource. You want to be able to look through commentaries, trusted commentaries, mm-hmm. other scholars, uh, and see what is it that they're saying about this text after you've already studied and looked upon it yourself. Yeah, you don't want to be lazy when you're studying. Uh, but if you're listening to Dr. Voshin, I know that you're already studying and maybe, uh, but we want to be able to help you study more. And so does Logos. And so there's a special offer uh, on the new Logos. And you want to head on over to logos.com slash doctrine and you get an exclusive offer. So you want to go logos.com slash doctrine. How much do they get off? It's like, uh, it's, it's between, like if you're upgrading, if you already have Logos, it's like 20% off. Okay, and it's uh, I, I think it's like ten percent off if you're buying it brand. If you're new. buying it brand new, wow, brand that's so, a, that's a great deal. Let me tell you one of the things that I just discovered on Logos, which is another reason why you should buy it. Oh, you? I, I oh, didn't discover. So, it. No, you didn't. No, I, no, I didn't no, discover no, it. Michael, Michael Beck. Michael, Michael Beck, Beck showed Beck it to me. Us. Yep. So I did not discover. Or told a thing. you? You told me. But I always say this. Uh, Steve knows this. Whenever Steve shows me something, I tell everybody else that I discovered it. Anyways, um, cited by, yeah. cited by. So now when I highlight a Bible passage, I double click. And I go to cited by, and because I've already set up uh, a parameter for that, uh, a special uh, category, it will look up every time that verse has been talked about, not just in commentaries. It'll look at like the complete works of John Owen, wow. and it'll tell me every time it was it was used in John Owen's works, and it'll show me what he has to say about it. So, very cool. You want to get Logos, because you can't do that with the 16-volume hardcover sitting on your shelf. No, no, not at all. So, logos.com slash doctrine. Okay, so let's let's talk about Jesus and his his human nature here. I got to bring up the the confession again. Okay, why don't you go ahead and read through that again? All right, so it says that uh, of one substance and equal with Him who made the world, who upholds all things. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so to take upon Him man's nature with all the essential properties and common infirmities of it, yet without sin. So when we're talking about uh, human nature, its essential properties. Right. So um, what is essential to um, to to the, the, the say you could just say like the what it was to mean to be human. Right. Yeah. Um, so we know he's going to have a, a, a real body. Right? Correct. He's, 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 so he is a physical being he, when he ta- by taking on humanity it's the, the Gnostics got it wrong. Um, that he wasn't just spirit. No, it wasn't just spirit. He just didn't look human. Mm-hmm. Uh, he didn't just look like us, but he actually was us. And so, you know, he took on with him this um, this human nature that made him just like us in every essential way, but without sin. Mm. Now, b- before we get into this, let me just say, a lot of people would say, "Well, isn't it isn't it?" human to sin like you know and it, but to we, err is human right that's we hear that a lot and so our response to that is no uh to err is the corruption of our humanity mm. uh to sin is almost inhuman so you know we will be perfected in glory we will be fully human and we will not sin uh jesus was the perfect god man and therefore he did not sin he could not sin we believe in impeccability we can talk about this some other time yeah um but for now let's just say this that that jesus was like us in every essential way and that means that with that came these uh, what the confession calls common infirmities now these aren't bad things these are just the limitations that come with humanity yeah. uh, particularly uh, you know like man physical here, right yeah right? we're talking about like the physicality of it like the body limitations uh, uh, we're talking about growth right he's got a He's actually got to develop. We, we see, you know, yeah. he comes and he's, baby. And he's a baby in swaddling cloths. That's like, right. What the heck? And it's, he's, it's amazing. He's going to be cared for. He's going to be fed. That's right. And then he's going to grow in wisdom and in stature. Yep. Right. He's, um, but even then, you know, he's just growing, you know, in in his human intellect, right, and uh, growing in in his relationships. Always without sin, but the fact that he had to grow. I mean, this is this is the eternal God who doesn't change. Mm. You know, the eternal God does not have emotions like us. He doesn't have affections like us. He has perfections. We've yeah. talked about that. Yep. So well, we talked about what divine impassibility, right? Right. 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 Yep. So. But in his human state, he was very emotional. Yeah. We know that Jesus wept. Yep. You know, he was... We know that... Yeah. Go ahead. Filled with sorrow. Yeah. Uh, We know he was distressed. Right. And so we... I mean, tons of passages that you can look at that that highlight the emotional state of Jesus. Now, again, he's not like us. So his emotions don't lead him to sin, whereas ours do frequently lead us to sin. Um, And then on top of that, you know, he got hungry. 
I mean, Jesus got hungry. He had to eat. He got thirsty. He had to drink. He got <laughs> he got tired. He fatigued. He needed to sleep. Now, Jesus sleeping on the boat, not because he wanted to teach he his was, disciples a lesson. He was an introvert. He had to get away from people. Yeah. <laughs> like, go off and be by himself. <laughs> Yet he was without sin. Mm -hmm. Like in all of this, he is. So what is this saying? He's saying, well, he is very much like us, but he is not like us. But he is like us and not like us in order to be for us. That's I like the thing, that, yeah. Right? So he's, he's like us in his humanity. He's not like us in our sin so that he can be for us as a savior. Mm. So, he, so that he could represent us. He, the, the second Adam could represent us, uh, fulfill the law's demands, uh, so that we, and then atone for our sins so yep. that we could be restored back to God. And ultimately, as you're talking about, Joe, uh, in glory, be restored back to hum our 100% humanity. Yeah. What we were created to be from the start. And without... Jesus being the God, man, that's just not possible. The incarnation yeah. and the atonement, right? These were necessary. Yeah. They weren't just a way that God could do it. It was the only way that God could do it and mm -hmm. would do it. And so we have this. And so we're, as we're beginning to put together in paragraph two, this picture of Jesus, eternal God, second person of the Trinity, upholding and governing all things. And yet he condescends to take on human nature to be like us. Right. Yet without sin. We haven't even gotten to like where this is all going in the confession. Yeah. But yeah. the point is pretty clear. He was made like his brothers so that he could rescue us. Yeah. And that's that's the answer to the so what question, right? Why does this matter? Because the, when you, the more you begin to understand the depths of the condescension of the Son of God, that his love is a condescending love. We didn't deserve his love, and yet he loved us, and he stooped so low to get dirt under his fingernails, mm. to get harassed and insulted by people that he owns, people that he made right people that were made for his glory but yet rejected him he got tired and thirsty and he had to eat he was lonely and isolated hmm. and betrayed all of that all of that condescension was for our good it was a struggle he had to uh go through all this i mean it was it was it was a battle love is a battlefield <laughs> don't say that when i'm drinking <laughs> just made a joke yeah donnie liked it <laughs> thanks donnie <laughs> Come All on, right. Steven. Steven, uh, that was good. All right. That was McCoy approved. All right. <laughs> If you want to join the conversation, you can join us online on Twitter and Instagram at Doc and Devo. We're on Facebook, facebook.com slash Doctrine and Devotion. we got a website, DoctrineAndDevotion.com. There you can find all the show notes and everything else. Uh, I don't know what else. Uh, Fresh Pod every yeah, Monday at Thursday, blog posts on Wednesdays. Love is a battle Video field. content when available. Later. Doing so good. Come on, dude. Happen. That was great. Fantastic. Let's do it over.